Hello everybody and welcome back to Broden Plays Ancient Domains of Mystery. Here today I'm going to be playing, uh, I've actually taken a look at some of the um, key bindings, I've taken a look at the, some of the classes, some of the races, and I've looked up a, a couple of guides just because I think it's, uh, it's advantageous for someone who's doing a Let's Play to know a little bit more about the game than I did in the beginning. Um, now this series, I'll actually do a little bit more like a tutorial series because I feel like these games are, well, they're really hard to, uh, they're really hard to break into, but once you do, you find just, just how great that they can be. Um, there's a lot of depth to them, uh, there's a lot of things that could go right, things that could go wrong, and it's very interesting for sure. So, first thing that we're going to do is I want to talk about creating a new game. Now, when you create a new game, uh, you can start the tutorial. That is, that is absolutely beneficial for uh, for new players to try and see what's what's going on there. Um, but uh, if you've already done the tutorial, then you might be ready to generate a new character. Now, I will say that if you start uh, if you start the game without knowing anything about it, um, that's you're going to have a hard time. If you go down here to manual, it'll tell you everything that you need to know about everything. It's very, very, very. Uh, uh, in depth and the good thing about this manual is that you can actually look at it in game as well So this tells you about the signs that you can do the horoscope This talks about the races and classes and what they do Alignment skills talents just basically everything for sure. So we're just going to create a new game I do have a, an idea of things that I want to do so we'll do that so uh, One of the things that I, I was doing before this stream started is I was doing a little bit more of a magic based character now that is something that, uh, I like some magic based characters, I don't like all of the magic based characters, so we may go back to magic base, but uh, hmm, but what I think, what I think would be best is, in the very beginning, we're gonna start with a, uh, with just a melee build, melee, 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 and then that way you can see, uh, you know, just the basics of the game. Uh, the magic is a very uh, complicated process, and it's something that we'll do in a little bit of a more advanced playthrough. So, things that are good for melee. Um, wolf is a good sign. It, it, sa it says initial perception, initial willpower, and food is more nutritious to you. I've starved on more than one game, so that tells you that sometimes, you know, I'm not, I'm not very good. <laughs> at things like this. Um, I do also like the ones that give you one free talent, and I'll show you why a little bit later. Uh, you know, we might, we might take the, the Falcon. So very good at surviving in the wilderness, plus two to initial willpower, plus one to charisma, and one free talent. I'm doing that for the free talent, basically. Um, now, a Hurthling, I believe, also gets a free talent, but uh, we'll go ahead and go with... Uh, a human's good at climbing, food preservation, haggling, and swimming. Um, I kind of want someone who can cook like this guy, but Hearthlings also, they need a lot of food. They like to eat regularly, and so it's really hard to sustain them. Um, Drakelings, on the other hand, uh, honestly, they, they eat anything, I believe, and uh, and they don't, they don't care. Uh, they're dragon people, so their charisma isn't very high, Mist Elves are like the... They started with the creation of the universe. So they're created with Mist, um, and they all formed to create this character. And the cool thing about a Mist Elf is that it's really hard for characters to hit you because you can kind of uh, go in and out of the Mist. So it's it's a really nice one. Dark Elves are... Um, Dark Elves are very, very evil. I'm not going to talk about all of these. Uh, you, can, you can take a look at yourself. Uh, but I might do, hmm, something that's really good at smacking things. I know Drakeling is good at that, uh, and they're good at music as well, but I'm gonna go ahead and do a human, just, just to keep it really simple, you know? And what better thing to do, um, with a fighting character than either go fighting, barbarian, uh, beast fighter, or duelist. Beast fighters are nice. Uh, they're, they're a lot of fun. They do weaponless combat, which is really cool. Uh, you also have a Chaos Knight, which is which is a lot of fun to do as well. Um, but I will probably go ahead and just do... You know, a Monk is kind of like a Beast Fighter too, which is interesting. 
but uh, a beast fighter, I believe, can't be literate, so they can't actually learn any spells or anything. So we're just going to go with a fighter, a basic fighter here. And with our attributes, we're actually going to put points into attributes ourselves. So we're going to have go ahead and play here. Now, one thing that's interesting is if all of your attributes total um, are divisible by 7, you get an extra talent. Now, I'm not going to do the math in this game and, 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 uh, and show you what that would look like, but uh, it, it's, it's really cool to see. So we're actually going to put some points there and some points there. We're going to put another one in learning and strength we'll put some. And we're all out of points. So we have 16, 11, 13, 12, 13, 11, 10, 7 mana. We don't need a lot of mana. And then Perception 10. So let's play. Alright, so we get to choose two talents. That's unfortunate. If we were able to choose three talents, then we'd be able to get uh, what's called the air. Um, and what an air does is it gives you an heirloom. Um, and generally those are very powerful weapons. Some are powerful artifacts. Some are powerful armor. How to do that is you do boon to the family for one of them. Um, and then you do Charming, and then after you do those two talents, another talent will show up that says Air. So it's a really good start for people who are very beginning the game, because uh, it, it's a good it's a good way to do things. So I do like uh, Healthy, just because Healing Wounds is, is very important to me. Um, also, let's see here. Plus one to hit in the way. That sounds really good to me, um, including what I'm doing right now. Plus one DV is pretty good at the very beginning, but doesn't stack well. So, same thing with plus three hit points, but then you have a, you have the ability to, um, once you unlock Hardy, you can unlock other things as well. Plus one to learning is always nice, I, I have um, seen. Uh, plus one DV when wielding a shield, but again, that's just plus one, so. Plus two to speed is always, always interesting. Uh, plus one to toughness is nice. You know what? I'm going to do uh, plus one to toughness for sure. And my name is just going to be Broden. Oh, the name Broden is already in use. Okay. Uh, Broden Play. Sure. First and last name. My last name is Plays. It's a... Uh, it, it, it comes from the Greek... Um, I, I have no joke there. Sorry, I tried. Okay, so... When you first start the game, you are uh, greeted by this situation. I've actually made the map much bigger than it usually is. It's usually just in this little corner, but I do like a big map just to see what's going on. Um, in order to change that, you can go to, uh, let's see, I think it's just settings if you push escape. Oh, not while in the wilderness, so maybe not. Maybe you can only change it uh, in, the, in the main menu. That's interesting. Okay, so that's what we have so far. Chainmail, light cloak, a broadsword. It does 1d7 damage plus 3, which means it could do anywhere from 1 to 7 damage and then add 3 to that. So that's going to be 4 to 10 damage. Um, we have a medium shield. We have heavy boots. Uh, let's see what's in our backpack. So we have a box of flint and steel and a tinder box. That'll allow us to create a fire. We have 1 iron ration, 113 gold pieces, and 3 torches. As far as our skills go, we have archery, athletics, climbing, dodge, fine weakness, first aid, food preservation, haggling, listening, metal, metallurgy, um, stealth, survival, swimming, and two-weapon combat. Honestly, the only one that you do uh, from this list that is an active ability and not something that's passive uh, is first aid. So we're going to go ahead and quick, if you look at the bottom here, it says quick mark skill, zero through nine. We're going to click one to quick mark it, and then we're going to put uh, F for first aid. So once we open our skill menu, we can just push one, and then the, the first aid will happen without having to open the, the, the entirety of the menu as you see here. It'll just be a, we, we click like, um, I believe it's just A, and then one, and then we'll do first aid on ourselves. So this is, this is how good we are at combat. Um, with swords, we have a level two in swords, so we have a plus two to hit. We don't have any plus to damage or, or uh, to our DV. So, and that's basically the only thing that we have. Uh, shields, we have plus two DV, which is nice. So, and this also um, tells you a little bit about what we can do with uh, with our melee weapons. So the right hand has a plus five bonus to hit and a 1d7 plus six damage. So plus five damage to hit is nice. Um, we don't have any quests. This is the history of our character. Uh, you can take a look at that if you want. We're 28 years old. No, wait, we're not 28 years old. We're 23 years old, grown up. And since we're human, we uh, we can expect to live to be 60. 
but I'm sure this game will take our life before that ever happens. So, let's take a look here. Maybe in the help menu we're able to, to uh, look at our... No, no, we're not able to look at our uh, options here, because I kind of want to you know, make this map not so large. You know we'll, we'll just kind of put it in the corner. If I need the map later, I'll show you. All right, so we're going to go here. Um, it's an unassuming cave entry, so if you push shift and then uh, period, which is actually the, you know, greater than sign, you go down into, go down to the next level, which in this case is the cave entry. So this is basically how it goes. If you're a melee weapon or melee character, you run into the character and then you attack them and they attack you. Um, so you have uh, the numpad that I'm using here. So you can move left, right, up and down. You can also move diagonally with the uh, respective things of the numpad. And di diagonally um, moving is a very good tactic, especially if you're trying to run away it basically makes you move two tiles um, whereas the enemy uh, won't be able to catch you if you do that so go up we killed him um, we have a brittle book here I don't think I'm literate uh, if you have a certain uh, learning skill I believe it's 10 you do get literacy so um, let's take a look here at our skills and see if we are literate no we're not we're not literate um, at all so we have listening, but we can't uh, we can't actually read books, which is unfortunate because books generally contain uh, spells and of that nature. So, and we also have two mana, so we are able to cast spells. Not very good spells, mind you. Um, I'm not sure. I haven't run into a spell that only costs two mana quite yet, but uh, the, the mana will increase as time goes on. So, as you can see with the with the map here in the bottom right hand corner, it is taking up a large portion of the screen, so we might change that in a bit. Um, I'm going to use this. Uh, um, this pad right here that I have it's a notepad to write down some of the the hotkeys and I would suggest you to do the same you can do so with me like so if we go to uh, help it'll tell us um, some of the essential commands so zero will actually explore unknown areas which will which will help you to uh, not have to click the the keys to go on V is display background and I'll show you a little bit about what that means later um, and then enter is act reasonably which you know sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't a big S is to save the game and then underscore is to pray so um, if you want to search for hidden doors uh, you, you use W and then S so you click W and then you click S that's what that means it doesn't mean you have to do them simultaneously. If you have to click something simultaneously, there will be a plus. So let's go to advanced key bindings um, and essential command overview. This will this will tell you uh, all the ones that are pretty essential when you're moving and, and doing other things. So W dot is an extended wait and W5 is also an extended wait. It means you'll basically wait until you heal up or something else happens. Um, so what we do here is let's take a look at a uh, Pick up items is comma. That's a very interest, or that's a very good one to remember. It's uh, it's fairly close to the numpad, so it's not really hard to reach. Uh, shoot and throw missiles is T, uh, lowercase T. If you do notice, there are some lowercase. Um, actually, all of these are lowercase. So if it is an uppercase letter, you will have to hold shift and then push it, uh, which is, I think, is good. So L means examine an environment. What that does is, uh, if you push L, you can... Actually, I'll just, I'll just show you that later. Um, let's go to uh, exit this, and we'll look at uh, character information, because this is interesting. So um, the at sign will display character information, B, display background. See, it's a capital B, so you have to push shift and B. Um, display quests, elapsed game time, um, talent. So we can display talents and display talents available, statistics. We'll display all the statistics to play, display monster kills and their wound status, which is interesting. L is to check literacy, so I'm actually going to put capital L here just so I can check literacy a little bit later. And then you can display your burden levels, your chaos powers, your companions, uh, your identified items, your recipes, uh, and your, your required experience for the next level. So that's good to know. Um, this is the one... These here are the ones that I have a hard time remembering. So let's go to the inventory. 
I is inventory, capital I is miscellaneous equipment. So capital I, I believe, brings up just the backpack. And then I brings up the, uh, what you're wearing. So, um, pick up items primitively, pick up items or pick up items comfortably. I always do, um, just the normal pick up items. I don't think doing it comfortably does much unless it's a fragile item. Uh, so, one thing that I'll, that I'll tell you, if you push Control D, it's drop items comfortably. What that means is if you hold Control and you press D, you're able to list a bunch of items that you want to drop, and then you exit the menu and it will drop them all. That's good if your inventory gets over cluttered and you get burdened. So let's take a look at uh, uh, food, item, and character. So capital D is to drink, and then lowercase e equals eat. I have a hard time remembering that, that one, so I'm writing that one down. Capital U is to use item, and then uh, Lowercase u is to use tool. R is to read, lowercase r. And then this is the exclamation point is to dip something into a potion, which I'll tell you a little bit about that later. You also do have one for uh, clean ears, wipe your face, and to name monsters or yourself, which is good. Uh, so let's look at, uh, did I do food item and character? Yes, I did. Okay, ability, skill, and spell. This is the one I have a, a hard time with. So, um, Control X is use class power. Uh, if you if you have a class that has a power, you're able to use it there. M is to use special abilities. This is the one that I have here. So um, capital A is to uh, display skills, and lowercase A is to use the skills that you uh, that you previously put on a quick mark status. So I would push lowercase a and push one if I want to use the skill that I put there. So capital Z is to cast a spell, and then colon capital Z is to mark spells. I'm actually going to put colon capital Z here because I'm not sure what that means. All right, so after that, um, there's religion. We can pray, sacrifice, and display the name of our deity. Um, interaction and pay. Uh, capital C, chat with monster. That's always that's always fun to do. Um, even if it is a an enemy monster, it will it will display a, a little bit of text, and you can you can learn a little bit more about them. Oh, my apologies. I'm a bit tired right now. So, uh, tactic tactics are awesome. Um, I'll get into tactics a little bit later as we get into the, the game here, and I think that basically does most of everything that I want to show you. Um, oh, this is a complete list of all the all the things. All right, so let's exit the mapping. So in order to um, look at our skills, we do Shift A, and these are all of our skills. So if we wanted to use First Aid, we do lowercase a, and then down here on the bottom left hand, you say, it says which skill, one to select. Um, if you have different skills, it'll say one, two, three, four, quick select. So we will do one, and then uh, there's no recent wound to take care of since we haven't been wounded. Um, let's do colon Z, colon Z, and it, it shows, okay, so that brings up the spells. Interesting, okay, that's good to know. And then just uh, shift Z, so like a spell to cast, and lowercase Z just is to zap. So that's interesting. All right, so, what we're going to do from here, okay, so let's capital I. See, this is our backpack. This is what's called um, miscellaneous items because we're not currently using them. And then uh, push E, it will eat. If we have food, it'll display it for I and ration. Um, v to display background. This shows you the background of the character. Capital V, okay, it doesn't really do much. All right, cool. So we'll continue on from here. You can click with the mouse as well. And it, if you have a hard time remembering um, controls, they have this really cool right click um, applied here where you can look, kick, open door, and apply skill. And that'll change depending on where you're at. So if you're mouse clicker, it is it is um, not easy per se, but it is possible to uh, play the game with just clicking the mouse. All right, so right here, whenever a hall just kind of ends, oh, sorry. Whenever a hall just kind of ends, you might want to do WS to search. And as you can see, this this brought up a, um, a door. So we'll try and open the door. 
I don't have an appropriate key to use the door. So this is where you can kick the door down. I will tell you, if you kick the door down, there's a possibility the door will fling you in your face and you will die. So that is always a possibility that you have to deal with. Um, this is actually a good time because of this map to show you a little bit more about, uh, about the options in the main menu. So if you click Shift S, so capital S, it'll save the game. Now this is a roguelike, which means that you can't ever permanently save. You can't go back to a previous save if your character has died. So it saves the game and exits in order for you to take a break. And when you restore the old game, it'll restore the game that you had. So let's go down, down to settings. We're going to go to, um, not expert settings, game settings. And we're going to do uh, the mini map. Um, I believe it was originally four and then five. Actually, I think it was three and five. So we'll do that. Um, and then we'll play and we'll exit and we'll restart, store our game. I've been playing a little bit here. I have a level eight druid and a level six necromancer. Um, so here, here's the map now. See, it's it's a lot smaller and it works. So that's what we're gonna do. Now this is a turn-based game. For instance, this rat will not move until I make a move and then it moves. So we've, we've advanced to level two. Up here in the left hand, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and go over the interface real quick because I think this is a good point to do so. Well, after I, I level up. So when you level up, you're able to click choose a skill to improve. The reason why I chose a human is because up here in the left you say one out of four. So I get to improve four different skills because of the class, the race, and everything else that I chose. If you don't have, uh, if you choose a certain class, you might only get two per level, you might get three per level. I've had as much as five per level as well because of the, my birth sign and stuff. So, uh, one out of four, I, I'm, I'm able to maximize four skills. So uh, we'll do first aid to increase if we do get damaged. Food preservation is nice because um, it increases the chance of, uh, uh, number one, uh, it makes it so food doesn't doesn't go to waste as much. And number two, it also increases the chance of corpses showing up, which is good because you can then cook corpses and you can, you can eat them. Or you can eat them raw, depending on what you want to do. Um, two weapon combat. We're not certain. We're not using two weapon combat right now. We're using a shield. Athletics is nice for certain athletic checks. Uh, climbing is nice. Obviously, dodge is nice. We're going to go ahead and, and click dice or dodge. And if you see here on the right hand, uh, it'll tell you how much these will increase by. So plus four d4 means they will roll four d4s, and then it'll increase by the value of whatever those four d4s um, ended up being. So. Now let's take a look at the interface. Right here, we have character information or a character background. You can left click or right click up here to look at it. So if we right click, it shows us our background. If we left click, it'll show us our information. Right here is the PC experience level. So um, the display experience, it shows you how many experience points you need for each level. So as you see, um, as you get down to further levels, it, it, it costs a lot more experience points than in the very beginning. Um, and then this little bar right here, this little gray bar, shows you how close you are to leveling up. Now, this is the uh, hit points. That is to drink. Um, generally, you drink potions. And then if you right click, it's to read. And I don't know how to read because I'm not literate. And then here is our power points. If you, click, if you click on it, you can do the spell. We don't have any spells. Now, this is the. these are the tactics, tactics I was talking about. If you left click on it, you get more aggressive. And you look at the bottom, it says plus two to hit, plus one damage, and minus three defense value. So we can go all the way to Berserker, which gives us a plus seven chance to hit, plus four to damage. We have a nine, minus nine defense value, which brings our defense value down to four. And you can go down the other way. So right now we're at Coward, which is the lowest it can go. We have 22 defense points, because we have plus 90 DB. We have minus eight to, ch to hit and minus five to damage. But also if you're a coward, you move faster because you know you, you don't want to die. So we're just going to go ahead and do normal for now. I'll show you a little bit about how that can be um, beneficial for you later. A defense value means that they're rolling against that defense value. So um, you, you have a higher ability to uh, dodge. Now, the protection value, what a protection value do, does is let's say a character hits you by eight. Well, the protection value will take out seven of those points. So they'll hit you for one HP, which is right here, our hit points. So, and this also shows you the, the dungeon level. We're on Unremarkable Cave, so UC. 
Um, and if you click, click it once, it'll go up or go down. If you click it twice, it'll actually take you to the staircase or until something happens. For instance, this rat showed up. This shows you your alignment. Um, you can pray. If you pray, you can get uh, you can get miracles to happen. They can heal you. They can get rid of poison. It's random, so you can't actually decide what you want. But also, they get upset with you if you pray too often. Um, you know, like God today gets upset with you if you pray too often. He hates prayers. That's that's a joke, by the way. I, I'm, uh, you know, neutral when it comes to whether or not you pray to God. That's fine with me. And then O is to sacrifice. You sacrifice at altars. And if you sacrifice as, as an altar, um, for instance, you are truly aligned to neutrality. If we find a neutral altar, we can sacrifice to it uh, to increase our standing with this god. Or we can try and change our alignment by sacrificing it to different altars, a chaos altar or a lot of altars alter. This is the dynamic display. Right now it's displaying the current speed value, which is 100. Um, it does a lot of other things like uh, um, the energy cost, uh, gold that we have, uh, the number of missiles we have in our quiver, uh, the moves that we've executed. So, you know, that goes up every time we move. And then, oh, yep, let's go up and kill this rat real quick. And then, uh, you know, current speed value. Now, this is strength, learning, willpower, Dexterity, toughness, charisma, appearance, mana, and perception. If we go to strength, I'll show you. You see how it says raw 18 out of 26? 26 is the maximum strength we can have on this character, and 18 is what we currently have. So um, that's kind of how this game works. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and go down a level. Oh, so let's try and kill this guy real quick. We were successful in, in hitting him. Let's go down a level. And there's another guy for us to kill. And we've uh, advanced to level 3. Now, depending on what level you advance to, you are able to click another talent. It's not every level, but, you know, it's uh, it's a fair bit of, of levels. I think it's every odd level at first, uh, but I'm not entirely certain how that works. Um, I don't really care. That's why I haven't looked into it. So let's do athletics. We'll increase that. Um, and you kind of want to look here and see how much it'll increase by. Also, this shows you the maximum it can be. So, for instance, we have 30 in dodge. The maximum can be 37. It'll roll 3d5. So chances are, if we click that, we're going to expend more points than we can actually have as a maximum. So I'll show you. Oh, well, okay, we rolled a 5, so never mind. That was a, a terrible demonstration of, of what happens there. We would just reach the cap, and we couldn't go any higher, right? So, um, let's see. Stealth is nice. Um, it helps you not be detected by enemies. Uh, it also improves your dodging skills. Swimming is good. Weapon combat, again, we're not using right now. Archery, we're not really using right now either, but we did get a crossbow, so we might use that a little bit later. So here we go with our talents. Um, uh, these are all just affinities. I don't, I don't really mess with those um, in the very beginning. Uh, they are nice to have, though. So, let's see. <laughs> I'm just trying to see if there's a there's a good one for us to have here. I do like carrying capacity. That's just a personal preference, though. Speed's nice. Speed's always nice because it means you can um, act more than the enemy, uh, which means that you're able to, you know, maybe sometimes do two attacks instead of one. Um, extraordinarily stealthy is nice. Shot price is reduced. Plus one DB while wielding a shield. We're going to go ahead and do, uh, we are going to do an affinity, sure. So right now we have a sword. So we're going to do an affinity with swords. We have plus two to hit when we hit with a sword. There's some clothes lying here. We pick up the clothes. And I'll, I'll briefly pick up on uh, what happens if you if you get items. So if we go to our inventory right here, we can uh, go to missile weapon and, um, and do our light crossbow. Equip our light crossbow. One thing that I will warn you of, some items are blessed. Some items are cursed. You don't know when you pick them up. If you want to know, a scroll of identify will always help. But if you want to quickly know, just equip it. And then it'll show you it's a light crossbow plus four plus three. So we lucked out because that's that's a really good crossbow actually. And then uh, what else did we get? It was one other thing. Clothes. So right now we're wearing uh, um, main, or chain mail, which means our movement speed is, is slower. And it's a minus three to hit, I believe, but a plus five to DV. So if we can, we, we remove that, and then we put on the clothes, it'll show us it's plus zero, plus zero. So it really doesn't do much, but it also doesn't 
uh, penalize us, and it only costs, it only weighs 40 stones. Now, stones is the last thing that I'll cover here. Right now, we're carrying 1,279 stones. Uh, that's the weight that they do. And we have, uh, if we're burdened, it's 1,463 stones plus. Strain, 1,951 stones plus. Very strained is that. And then we can't go above 3,412 stones, otherwise we can't move. Now, what's interesting about this? If you're burdened, you can actually increase your strength by being burdened, because you know you're carrying more than you usually would. If you're strained, that can actually decrease strength because you're wearing your muscles out, and same thing with very strained. So uh, that's something to keep in mind. So sometimes it's okay to be burdened. You will get hungrier the more you're carrying, though. So keep that in mind if you don't have a, a lot of um, opportunity to eat. And if you see here, our deity is Istaria. So that's very nice to know. All right, and that's going to do it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. This is basically just a tutorial jump into. Um, next episode, we're going to do some gameplay. I'm going to tell you a little bit about how it works. And, and we're just going to enjoy our playthrough. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you next time.